Hello and welcome to this video on the ways bonsai trees fuse together. This is a useful thing when you graft branches, roots, and even whole trunks. Some bonsai or trees in general will not take to grafting. It does not matter how many, where, or when you graft, it simply does not work. Part of this can be understood from the way trees fuse together. Other uses for this knowledge include how best to graft different parts of your bonsai. It can also help in understanding how best to promote certain kinds of growth. While this form of fusion is not the same thing as grafting, it is very similar. It's something known as inosculation, a natural phenomena. It's most common when you have two branches of two trees coming together and joining. They grow together. It's not common between species, but it can happen. This is also a term that if you are searching for it, you need to be mindful of the usage in plastic surgery. Although used in that field, it's a very different thing. When we talk about this, the grafting or inosculation or fusing of parts of trees from the same species, or even different genre and families of trees, is what we're talking about here. It's the cambium of two trees coming together, grafting and growing together to form, at least in that one location, a single plant. In order to understand what's happening, we need to start with the structure of your tree, or at least the branches. There are different layers of the tree, and these are made up of different kinds of cells. The outermost of which is the bark that you would be familiar with. This is the thing that you see at all times. These cover a thin layer of active living cells, known as the phlegm. Inside this lies another layer of cells, known as the cambium. The cambium are the active growing cells of the tree, those that contribute to its size and appearance. Further inside this you'll find the sapwood and heartwood. These two parts of the tree are slightly different but almost entirely related to each other. Sapwood is, as the name would suggest, filled with sap, and this is responsible for movement of fluid. That in turn spreads nutrition and removes waste. Heartwood is responsible for supporting the tree. When we talk about fusion or inosculation, we're talking about the cambium layer in this case. The cambium is the growing active part of the tree. In its simplest terms, when you have two parts of two different plants where the cambium is exposed, for example from bark wearing away, the two parts of the cambium from different trees can come in contact, continue growing, and fuse together. The bark layer then heals over and around this, sealing it in. This creates what looks like an otherwise mundane and normal juncture. On a more technical level, which is where we want to get into some detail for you, it's a little more difficult to understand. The way a tree heals is somewhat similar to the way the human body heals, and that's an important part to remember. There are some distinct similarities and some very clear differences. Let's start with the assumption that you're continuing with an otherwise normal graph. You have a scion and a parent plant that you're putting the scion into. Once you have these two parts of the plants put together, you begin to activate various mechanisms within them, primarily those that detect and deal with wounds. The way the plant deals with this is the same as the human body. It begins to heal or regenerate. Plants can do that different ways, and how they respond will depend very much on how they view the graft. First thing you get is the changing transport along that cambium. The fact that you have different fluids moving in different ways sends out signals that tell the plant that something is wrong, that transportation has been interrupted. This means you no longer get movement of fluid from the leaves to the roots and vice versa. This means photosynthesis isn't happening the way it should. Because you've interrupted the movement of the fluid and the nutrition within, you get accumulation of oxen and sugars above the site where the graft is happening, but a reduction in these below that point. 
and this causes changes in the chemical structures that are there and the cellular functionality. This is how it begins to detect the wounds are occurring. You then get various genes being expressed. There are several that could occur, and for now we'll simply focus on the process overall, rather than any single gene. This occurs within hours, and it begins to encourage cellular differentiation and proliferation. This is the same as the human body, an increase in the number of cells to fill in the wound. While that occurs in the human body, the way the plant and the bonsai tree in particular does this is notably different. There is production of proteins, and this includes pectins. These are important in helping the cells to begin adhering and to strengthen the graft junction. The grafting won't happen if you don't have both these pectins occurring and the right modification to the enzymes in that part of the plant. Once that happens, you begin to see the plant being rebuilt around where the damage occurs. This allows for attachment to continue and the merging of the two parts of the graft. If you have incompatible grafts, this is where things deviate somewhat. You see the same sort of events occurring, but the attachments will begin to weaken, and as they weaken, they will eventually stop working altogether, leading to the death of the graft and possibly the whole plant. You can think about grafting occurring, or more accurately failing, in two particular ways. Short-term failures and long-term failures. Short-term tends to be fairly obvious and will occur within weeks, maybe months at the longest. This is a result of vascular tissue in the cambium failing to form across the graft junction. And because there's no joining of the vascular tissue, there's no movement of material from the roots to the leaves and vice versa. This is why you see death in very short order. The alternative long-term failure occurs when grafts have adhered and taken. Despite this, the grafted scion eventually fails. This can take months or years. As a result, it's much harder to understand exactly what's happening, but it's often a case of incompatible grafts occurring. You may only find out about the incompatibility well after it occurs. At a fundamental level, you can find out what's happening by measuring certain stress responses within the plants. The most important and immediately obvious is reactive oxygen species. This, coupled with lower transcription levels of antioxidants, means the plant can't cope with the stress. When you couple this lower ability to deal with stress and the increase in the amount of stress or stress-related radical oxygen species, you have a problem and it causes damage. This can also lead to an increase in phenolic compound production and other things that are byproducts of the incompatible grafting. Eventually, it will kill both the graft and the plant that you were grafting to. Despite some of these very obvious problems and difficulties in grafting, grafting can be incredibly useful, and fusing multiple trees is an easy way to create one very big tree. The advantages of grafting and fusing trees in general is that you have much greater control over where branches are growing. You can increase the size of the trunk, nabari and more. You are not going to be cutting large sections of the trunk or tree away. There's also the ability to get growth very quickly and very easily in the right places. The downsides to this are many of the things we've mentioned. You often have failures with grafting. Sometimes there can be many, sometimes you can be very successful. It will depend on the species and the tree in question. Sometimes a tree simply will not take a graft, despite being otherwise entirely compatible. In other cases, you could be looking at issues of certain species not being compatible in general, and that means you need to find the right species to put to the right species to get these graphs to take. Some of them are overall simply incredibly difficult. If you are trying to graft something, you need to be aware of competition between the two plants. 
both the one you're grafting from and the plant you are grafting to. If they're in the same pot, they may be competing for the limited resources. In other cases, the graft may be competing with the rest of the original plant you're grafting to, and this can be somewhat disadvantageous to the tree. That can slow down growth and cause some harm. Another issue is hastily done grafts can cause more harm than good. Done incorrectly, they can cause dieback and damage that will take years to recover from. One way to overcome many of the issues we've just described is to take cuttings from the tree you're going to graft to, grow these, and use the effectively cloned tree as your original material to graft to. This allows you to take the cloned material and put it back on the parent tree. That will remove many of the issues of compatibility. It will also allow you to, let's say, recycle or upcycle material. Although, at a more technical level than many of our other bonsai videos, hopefully this has been of interest to you and helped you to understand some of the complexities of what's going on with grafting and fusion, and some of the more technical information, such as the correct term for this. Thank you for watching the video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.